Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to share something that was shared to me by Alicia Haroldson via email. Uh, it is a YouTube video that talks about a group of uh, immigrants coming to Israel that are recognized as being from the tribe of Manasseh. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video. If you end up liking it, hit the notification bell, leave your comments and make sure to share this video. So um, this is something I haven't done for a while. I haven't done any uh, Lost Tribes of Israel videos. Uh, I've been occupied with a whole lot of other things, but uh, it is my intention to keep going with it. And uh, I guess we are going to be doing a new group today. They're called the B'nai Manashi or Manasha, so like sons, uh, children of Manasseh, essentially. Um, if you'll remember, uh, there's this Wikipedia article here that has a list of like these different groups that claim Israelite descent. And we've gone through some of them. We've talked about the Cochin Jews, which are from India. Um, We've talked about the Ibus, we've talked about the Pashtuns in uh, Afghanistan. Um, so this is actually, uh, this group is here on the list. So starting at the top though, you'll see that there's like different categories of these groups. So the first one is claimed Israel, Israelite descent with lineage proven, recognized as Jews. And uh, the only group within that category is the Cochin Jews. Um, if you'll remember the Cochins, uh, they are from down here. Uh, in Kochi. This is where they where they lived. And essentially, after Israel became a state, they all packed up and left, and they went to Israel. Um, we are going to be talking about a group that's from up here, the B'nai Menashe. Uh, they are from kind of like this area here, Manipur, the state of Manipur, or Manipur, I don't know, and then Mizoram, uh, which is right on the border with uh, Myanmar and uh, Bangladesh. Um, it is India, though. Like, India has, like, a weird border where um, Bangladesh is kind of, like, right here. And, like, if you if you want to go, if you want to drive through here, you can drive through this, like, little pass and then come over here and then come down to where they're from. So it's kind of, like, an odd shape, but that's where they're from is right here. Um, so, okay, so they are in this category, uh, claimed Israelite descent with lineage, lineage unproven, but recognized as Jews. So lineage unproven, but they are recognized as Jews. And you have some other ones here, the Bene Israel, the Beta Israel, and then we're, we're talking about the Bene Menashe. Um, so basically what happened, uh, this video is from just a couple months ago, October 25th, 2021. And uh, it's talking about this uh, group. Um, now, it's not the first group that's come. Uh, this, hap this has happened before, but a large group that's come through, they were welcomed. Uh, as you can see here, they're um, getting off the plane and being handed Israeli flags to, to welcome them to Israel. Um, they were basically brought here, or like, uh, they, they were assisted by a group called uh, Shave Israel. And this is a like an organization that uh, works with all these different groups. And, and they're trying to get um, these lost tribes and communities of Jews uh, to come back to Israel, right? So it says here, uh, Shavei Israel is a unique nonprofit organization dedicated to assisting descendants of Jews and the lost tribes of Israel to reclaim their roots. Active worldwide Shavei Israel is the starting point for anyone with Jewish heritage or ancestry who yearns to return. Founded by Michael Freund, uh, with the aim of strengthening the ties between the Jewish people and the state of Israel and the descendants of the Jews around the world, Shavei Israel is currently active in over a dozen countries and provides assistance to a variety of communities. And uh, you can go here, click on their communities, and um, and you have all these, the, the Inca Jews, the Kaifeng Jews, the Hidden Jews of Poland, the Jews of the Amazon, uh, here's B'nai Menashe, um, and if I remember right, oh yeah, right here, other communities. So those are like the main ones, but they have a bunch of other communities. So you can spend time here and you can like look through all this. Um, but they're, it's cool. They're dedicated to um, gathering Israel physically uh, to the land of Israel. Um, they have a little thing here about the B'nai Menashe. Uh, the, B'nai, the B'nai Menashe, sons of Manasseh, claim descent from one of the 10 lost tribes of Israel who were sent into exile by the Assyrian Empire more than 27 centuries ago. 
Their ancestors wandered through Central Asia and the Far East for centuries before settling in what is now northeastern India, along the border with Burma and Bangladesh. Uh, throughout their sojourn in exile, the Bene Menashe continued to practice Judaism, uh, just as their ancestors did, including observing the Sabbath, keeping kosher, uh, celebrating the festivals, like, you know, the um, like the Feast of Trumpets and Passover and Shavuot and Sukkot and all that stuff, and, and following the laws of family purity. And they continued to nourish the dream of one day returning to the land of their ancestors, the land of Israel. So, uh, it is happening, and it's been happening. I mean, like I said, uh, the Cochins, uh, they all up and left, like, in the in the 1950s. Um, and it's just, like, been a continual return uh, to Israel. Uh, not just people from the tribe of Judah, not just Levites, not just Benjamites, uh, but these other tribes as well that are, that are recognized as Jews. So, uh, in the Wikipedia article, it says... The Bene Menashe is a group in India claiming to uh, be descendants of the half tribe of Manasseh. In 2005, uh, members of the Bene Menashe who have studied Hebrew and ha who observe the Sabbath and other Jewish laws received the, the support of the Sephardic, or sorry, Sephardic um, chief rabbi of Israel in arranging formal conver conversions to Judaism. Some have converted and immigrated to Israel under the law of return. Which we've talked about that before. Israel has a, an actual law that allows you to uh, immigrate to Israel if you can prove your um, Jewish heritage. Um, according to their oral tradition, along with the rest of the tribes of Israel, the Bene Menashe were exiled to, to Assyria uh, in 722 BC. Um, Assyria was conquered by Babylon in 612 BC, which later was conquered by Persia five or 457 BC, which later was conquered by Alexander the Great of Greece, 331 BC. Uh, from here, they were deported to Afghanistan. And we know that, again, we know that there's the Pashtuns, they are still in Afghanistan and they've been recognized as um, being descended from Israel. Uh, they couldn't settle in Afghanistan. So from there, they headed east until they reached the area of Tibetan, of the Tibetan Chinese border. They finally settled in China in 231 BC. So if we go back to the map, um, essentially, uh, where is Tibet? I think it's like over, uh, there's Tibet right here. So kind of like, I guess in this area, something like right here, something like that. And, and as you can see, if you just go south from there, that's when you get to Manipur and uh, Mizoram. Okay. Um, this is when they realized when, <clears throat> okay, sorry. This is when they realized that they probably should have stayed in Afghanistan because the Chinese were extremely cruel to them and enslaved them. A sizable portion of them managed to escape and went into hiding from the Chinese in mountainous areas called Sinlung, which later became another name for the tribe of Manasseh. Another name that they are commonly called are cave people or mountain people. Uh, they were in hiding for two generations, during which they lived in extreme poverty, having almost no personal belongings, although they kept the Torah scroll with them the whole time. Gradually, they started to come out of hiding, and they eventually started assimilating and picking up Chinese influences. However, uh, because of their morbid experiences in China, they decided to leave. Uh, they set out west through Thailand and eventually reached Mandalay, um, a city in My Myanmar. From there, they reached the Chin Mountains. In the 18th century, a part of them migrated to Mizoram and Manipur, uh, which are located in northeast India. However, the arrival of Christian missionaries in the area, uh, with the arrival of Christian missionaries in the area, the whole community was converted to Christianity. And all, all of their written history was destroyed. Today, there are an estimated... Two million people who can be considered Bene Menashe, however, only about 9,000 of them return to Judaism. So, see, look how easily it is for a people to um, lose their identity. If these 9,000 hadn't returned to Judaism, then uh, there may not really be much of a record of them at all, or it would have been forgotten, or no one would have really cared. Um, so, I say that just because... You know, these lost tribes, I, I think that they're in a lot of different places, you know. 
Um, again, we've talked about Afghanistan. They were probably still practicing um, their original faith until Islam came on the scene and converted all of them. And who knows what kind of records or scripture or whatever they may have had that was destroyed. And who knows what discoveries may happen. Like, you know, what if there's, what if they had scriptures? What if they had prophets? And what if they're found in caves in the future, just like the Dead Sea Scrolls? We, we don't know. And it could happen for the B'nai Manashi and, and for other groups. So um, my main thought on this is that the main group... Uh, came up through here, and this is based on, a, in, on an Ensign article, that the main group came up here, and you can find linguistic evidence in, uh, both in, in like names of uh, cities and areas, but also in languages um, after 700 BC. Like you start to see uh, basically a movement of a people. You get like the indications that there were people that came up from Israel. They went up through here between the Black and Caspian Sea. Uh, they kind of settled in this area, but then they continued on and they came up into Europe. And I believe that these are the countries of the North. And then their prophets came out when uh, Joseph Smith was called to be a prophet and Brigham Young and so forth. And now we have additional scripture. Um, that's my interpretation. I know that there's some that believe that they're hidden somewhere um, in the earth or, or whatever, but um, I think that the, the main, main group came up here into Europe, mostly into Germanic and Scandinavian, but especially um, the British Isles. But other groups uh, went other places, including Africa, like possibly the Ibus right here in Nigeria. Um, others uh, over here, we have the Kurds. That's another group that uh, it's believed that they're descended from Israel. You have here in Afghanistan and part of Pakistan, you have several groups in India. And now we're talking about this one here where it seems like they really traveled uh, quite a bit because we just talked about them going up into uh, the Tibet, uh, China area, and then into Myanmar and also into Thailand. And then finally uh, coming over here uh, where they are today. Um, uh, the ones that haven't immigrated yet. So uh, anyway, so 9,000 of them out, out of the 2 million um, stuck with uh, Judaism, and they are trying to get to Israel today, and, and that's what they're doing. Um, here's another article. This is from JewishVirtualLibrary.org. Uh, Benny Menashe is the name given to Judea Judaizing groups from the northeast, from northeast India, mainly in two Indian states of Mizoram and Manipur. The Bene Benashi claimed descent from the tribe of Manasseh, one of the ten tribes exiled from the land of Israel by the Assyrians over 2,700 years ago. Members of the group include ethnic Chins, uh, Lushais, Kukis, and Mizos. Collectively, they are referred to as Shinlung. The movement, if one can call it such, started in the 1950s as a byproduct of the experience of colonialism and Christian missions. Remarkably, by the end of the 20th century, several hundred Shinlung uh, had formally converted to Orthodox Judaism. Uh, many more practiced a kind of Judaism. Others practiced Christianity while thinking of themselves as descendants of the ancient Israelites. By 2005, some 800 converts had settled in Israel, helped by an organization called uh, uh, Shave Israel, a Jerusalem-based group that attempts to give help and succor to lost Jews, uh, seeking, seeking to return to the Jewish people. For the most part, the Shinlung do not see themselves as converts in the usual sense of the term, like other such groups. One might cite the Bene Ephraim, uh, Telugu-speaking Jews of Andhra Pradesh, who believe themselves to be descended from the tribe of, of Ephraim, uh, they believe that they are historically of Jewish descent. This controversial claim has found little support among scholars, although a gifted Israeli essayist and translator, Hillel Halkin, took up their cause in a colorful account published in 2002. He was joined in 2005 by the Sephardi chief rabbi of Israel, Shlomo Amar, who uh, decided to formally recognize the B'nai Menashe as descendants of Israel and agreed to dispatch uh, Beit Din from Israel to Northeast India to convert them. In November 2017, 162 people from India's B'nai Menashe community arrived in Israel to reunite with family members and make new lives in the country. Another 250 arrived in December 2020. Um, 
the story of this unique community that maintained its connection to the Jewish people in the land of Israel down through the generations is powerful and inspiring. And I fervently hope that we will soon see the remaining B'nai Menashe make Aliyah, uh, which is immigration to Israel as well. Um, approximately 3,000 B'nai Menashe have settled in Israel with an additional 7,000 waiting to immigrate. All right. Um, so that that's basically it. Uh, that's basically it. I'm uh, I'm thankful uh, to um, <clears throat> what was it, uh, Alicia Haroldson, uh, for sending me this uh, YouTube video. I'm gonna put all these links in the description below if you want to check this check all this out. I would suggest watching the video because it's interesting. Um, but it, it's just amazing that you know this is happening. <laughs> you know uh, these really are the last days and. Um, of course, we know that with our church, we have um, we are also gathering scattered Israel, uh, and they're being brought into the house of Israel. Uh, whether they're they're literally being found like actual descendants, or whether they're being um, adopted into a tribe, it, it's happening. So, um, hope you like this. Uh, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, hit the notification bell, uh, leave your comments, and I'll talk to you guys later.